Not a slow match here, or excuse me, not a fast match here. No, and you can see Kenta at 7-0-2, oh, and two, yep. Rudy at 7-1-1. One, and one. These two deserve each other. To say the least. A little draw bracket action. And I'm really interested to see if uh, Kenta leaves in the counterbalances here, because when you're playing against Abrupt Decay, your natural instinct is to remove that card. The flip side of that is, Often, Soul Tide players will anticipate that that's happening, remove their abrupt decays, and then your counterbalances become good again. So there's a little guessing game that goes on there. Oroki's going to take a mulligan down to five here. Did not like the six cards either. You can see in Briska's hand, does have a copy of Liliana the Veil, among other options here. So looks to be a pretty good start here for Rudy. Yeah, opponent mulligan to five in the control mirror match. Obviously, a good start already. And if Rudy's able to resolve a Liliana, that just might be it. Six rounds of action a day for our Swiss rounds, and we'll cut to a top eight. And then we'll work our way through our elimination rounds and eventually crown a champion here in Indianapolis. We've had three great champions so far this year when we were in Columbus. Joe Lissette got the job done with White Blue Heroic. In Philadelphia, Daryl Ayers took care of Ross Merriman in the finals with his Kurt Apes. Can't forget that one. Oh, oh. And then in Washington, D.C. last weekend, Gerard Fabiano got the job done with his Sultai control deck that a lot of players are starting to pick up and play based off of Gerard's performance last weekend. Yeah, I've seen some tweets from uh, Simon Gertsen, Chris Pakula. Everyone wants to feed the clan. Feed the clan with no four power creatures in the deck. How can you say no? It's tough to pass up. Tough to pass up. We'll crown a fourth Open Series champion this year. Could be one of these two players as Hiroki will take a look at his five cards. Pyroblast among them. Looks like he's happy enough and treat the Angels too. Skull Intern will be the land. Gonna crack that, go down to 19. We'll see what land Kenta wants to search up here. Rudy with only two wastelands in his deck. So. One could argue it's safe to search up a non-basic, but looks like Hiroki might be on a one land or two, so I'm just going to search up a basic island. I think because Kenta has a divining top in his hand, he can afford to get a basic here and anticipate that he'll make his land drop suit the top. Because he will just lose the game to Wasteland if yeah. it came up here on the first turn. So uh, it's not ideal with Source Supply shares and Pyroblast in hand to have to go get an island, but it's very risky to do anything else. Death by Chime in the start there for Briska off of an underground C. His draw was a copy of Charlotte's Agent. And Soroki's going to spin his top in an upkeep, take a draw here. There's a copy of Caracas. So land number two has been found. Caracas will be deployed, and there's a source of plus shares to get Death right off the table. So not bad. And, and, and Divining Top is uh, perhaps Kent's best weapon in the matchup. Baleful Strips will come down. That'll allow Briska to cantrip. Picks up a copy of Polluted Delta before passing the turn back over to Hiroki. Roki's going to spin top on the upkeep yet again, looking for lands you have to imagine. Take a draw to Snapcaster Mage and just a passing of the turn. An attack here for one will bring Hiroki down to 18. Brisk is going to sacrifice a Verdant Catacombs. He'll go back down to 20. Tropical Island is the land he finds. And in a moment here, we're going to have a spell. Either Liliana or Charlotte's Agent, we'll see. I think this is a good spot for Liliana the Veil. Charlotte's Agent's going to flip into uh, a removal spell here probably a reasonable percentage of the time. But I guess it depends on Rudy's post-board configuration. He will go with the Charlotte's Agent. Time to Cascade. Going to go by quite a few lands. There's a Tarmogoyf. Milstrom Pulse, the lone spell that he's gone over, so he will shuffle those cards, put them to the bottom. Tarmogoyf going to resolve. Charlotte's agent going to resolve. And Hiroki going to spin the top. So Briscoe with a nice clock on the table. I suppose if Rudy's post board set up is Charlotte's agent only finds Ancestral Visions, Tarmogoyf, some other creature, or a discard spell, that's a fine use of Charlotte's agent. Yeah, I would be surprised if he has any misses in his deck after sideboard. The, the biggest miss would be Abrupt Decay. And again, it's arguable if he's even leaving that card in. Right. Liliana will lead things off. That will resolve. Elevator going up means both players will discard. Tarmogoy for Briska. Pyroblast there 
for Hiroki. Tarmogoyf will grow, and now here's an attack for six. Hiroki down to 12. And Rudy trying to diversify his stuff in play, so Terminus matters a little bit less. Also allows him to discard a creature, so the Goyf is bigger that turn. Really good turn. It's a brainstorm. Three cards coming. Two cards, of course, will be going back. And now spinning at the top, so Hiroki going to get one card deeper. On the hunt for Terminus, you have to imagine. Yeah, I mean, you can see his hand with Terminus and Council's Judgment. If he was actually able to uh, get to a Terminus here, he would have some shot here. But uh, without access to Terminus, I think he's not going to be able to answer the board and will succumb to this. Yeah, and Truth the Angels is just not going to be fast enough here. Hiroki going to go down to six. Briska going to play a Brainstorm. Take a look at three cards, put two back, make an informed decision on how he wants to discard the Liliana of the Veil. I think this should have been done pre-combat uh, for a variety of reasons. Rudy finding multiple copies of Thoughtseize here that could have uh, made things a little bit bigger for his Tarmogoyf. But as things stand, I think he's going to run away with this one. This is just too much going on. Yeah, I think so too. Here's a Thoughtseize now. Snapcaster Mage, Counterspell, and Council's Judgment are the cards. Snapcaster Mage is going to go to the bin. Briska left with the thoughts he's and a pernicious deed in hand. Liliana going to go up. Time to discard. There goes the thoughts he's. Pass the turn. Hiroki will draw. It's not a terminus yet. It's going to need to be in these three cards. And it doesn't look like one is hiding there, and it's not. Reed Briska going to win this match here over Kenta Hiroki. Two games to zero. Charlotte Soltai will take care of miracles, and Briska continues on his winning ways. Moves on to eight, one, and one. Pretty straightforward stuff. Five-card hand there for Kenta and, and Rudy with a really good setup, it looked like, to play a, a control game with good threats, Liliana the Veil, some broad-based removal we saw, some Planeswalkers. Had a good setup anyway, and then Kenta's mulligan to five just doomed him. Yeah, Charlotte Soltai's a deck that can definitely keep up with miracles in the late game as well.